Hello everyone, it's Matt M and welcome to my channel and very first video. By the time this video is posted, I would like to say happy lab week to all the laboratory professionals out there. May you be a scientist, may you be a technician, may you be a lab aide, a lab assistant, a phlebotomist, the lab clerks. To get things started, I would like to say thank you for all the efforts of everyone, all the essential workers, helping everyone it's really a good time for unity and diversity among people in the community people along the world for my little introduction I would like to say that I am working in a hospital laboratory and I am currently employed as a clinical laboratory scientist for today's video I would like to focus on how I studied in the Philippines and now work here and I would like to share the steps on how I became a laboratory scientist here. So yeah, what motivated me to take med tech? Well, first plan was always to become a doctor and then you want a pre-med course, clinical laboratory scientist because you are more focused on lab stuff and lab testing and lab results. I'm not saying this is the best, but this is one of the good ones that you can take. Or you can take nursing, pharmacy, PT, a lot of science fields, they all have their pros and cons and I weighed my pros and cons and this is where it all led to and I guess med school is something that we can do in the future. The steps on how you can start and work here in the United States. So of course you have to go to college first and take a degree in Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Science or uh, I think they call it Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science now and before it was also called Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology so either one of those courses will be fine. So the first four steps I could say are um, uh, you should have uh, the requirements are no well let's just say there are steps. <laughs> so the first four steps are um, one year internship ASCP no board exam una. yes board exam una. Philippine board exam and then you have to take the ASCP so that's the third step and then you will take the licensure exam on the state that you choose and in my case it's California hello this is future Matt and I would like to tackle on what type of visa I have I have a IR2 visa which means that I have an immediate relative which petitioned me to go here so that I can have my permanent resident card and for people who wants to go here through the working visa I think you have to take the oh my god that's kind of creepy <laughs> the door just opened anyways it is the international it's the international english it's the international english language training it's the international english language testing system Okay, that was a mouthful. That's an exam which tests your proficiency within the English language. This is usually taken by uh, countries where English is not their native language. As a pro tip, I would like to share what I used during this whole ordeal. I used a planner so that I can keep track on the dates of this exam, when I should take it, so that I can have a deadline and the general overview of everything. Uh, you can also use a digital uh, planner if you think that will increase your productivity. Lastly, I want to thank YouTube because I can share the information that I already have through this platform and I hope that I can help a lot of people who plans to work here also in California. So back to the video. Let's start with the first one. One year internship. So this is a picture of me in 2018 as an intern in one of the hospitals there in the Philippines. It's fun to take internship because it's like your little teaser of what's about to happen upon taking the real job that you actually studied for and some schools don't offer one-year internship so that's one thing you should consider upon uh, applying for college there are so many schools that offer medical technology and you should weigh the schools and should add this to one of your considerations if you want to work abroad if they offer the one-year internship after completing that one-year internship is that you should graduate then after that this is an optional step so basically there are three steps but 
let's just say four. I took the Philippine board exam, which is a two-day exam. I took it because people said that it will be easier for you to apply for ASCP once you have that PRC number. <laughs> I actually took the review. So here's a picture of me in one of my review center. I reviewed with Sasabihin ko ba? Oh my god, naga advertise ata ako. So, I reviewed with Pioneer Review Center. Pioneer Review Hub? Pioneer? Pioneer? No! Pioneer Educational Review Center. And then, I also reviewed with Lemoir Review Hub. So, napagsama ko sila. So, sorry na lang to both owners. Sorry, Sir Moraleta. Sorry, Ma'am Lea. So, November, December, ko yung nag Lemoir Review Hub. Tapos, January, February, dun ako nag Pioneer Review Center. And then, March ng board exam. The good thing about this is that sabi ng people, it's better to review Philippine boards and then not review for ASCP. But in my case, I took the Philippine boards. Once I passed the Philippine board exam, I reviewed with Lemoir Review Hub for the ASCP review, which I think it's just 14 days yung review nila, which is I think fun upon reviewing for the board exam tas nag apply na ako for ASCP sinabi ng PRC na hindi ko pa daw pwedeng makuha yung license card number ko because I'm not yet 21 at the time what I did was I just applied for ASCP and then that's when I knew you can bypass that step so this is what I meant earlier by saying that, that the Philippine board exam is an optional step if you just really want to work abroad, like directly fresh from graduation, take the ASCP licensure exam, California licensure exam, and then work abroad if that's your plan. But I did already. What's done is done. It is what it is. So. ASCP, you will have to study for a 100 item exam. It's either you can apply for ASCP Review Center, you can either not, but I did. You can just take the ASCP and then apply for California Department of Public Health because the requirement of the California license is to have that one year internship in California. Ha? Remember, this is California. So, one year internship, and then they want you to have the ASCP certification, ASCPI, because you're an international graduate, because ASCP is for people who graduated here in California, and then ASCPI is for people who graduated internationally like us who studied in the Philippines, ASCPI. And then you can also be certified by American Medical Technologies, and you can also be certified by AAB. AABB is blood bank. <laughs> so AAV, American Association of Bioanalysts. Either one of those is fine, whatever one you choose, but I happen to choose ASCPI because that's the route I know from people who already took it. Thankful for for people who have helped me get through all this. Recap lang, one year internship, ASCPI certification, and then you should apply for California Department of Public Health, California CLS license. So those are the three things that California is requiring. In conclusion, I just want to say that if you want a step-by-step -step on how I applied for ASCP, how I reviewed for the Philippine board exam, and how I applied for California Department of Public Health Laboratory Field Services, I can give you a step-by-step -step breakdown on future succeeding videos because everything I did is just an overview of how I became a medtech here in California. But for now, that's all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. And then I will see you next week. Happy Lab Week, everyone. And don't forget to wash your hands. Bye!